Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, this absolute value equation. So to graph this absolute value equation, basically what we need to do is identify you know, what are the new, new transformations that are going to be affecting our graph compared to our parent graph, which looks like here, which is y equals absolute value of x. So you can see the only thing that's changing is I'm multiplying my absolute value by negative 3 fourths. Um, since I'm not adding or subtracting inside my absolute value or outside, I know I'm not going to be shifting graph left or right at all. However, since I know I have a negative, that is going to tell me my a is negative, which means I'm going to reflect over the x-axis. So instead of my graph opening up, it's now going to open down. And then also, since the absolute value of my a, this 3 fourths, is less than 1, that's going to also tell me that my graph is going to be horizontally stretched. Now, to be able to identify you know, how it's horizontally stretched, we can use a table of values. And I'll talk about that in a second. So we know our vertex is still going to be at 0, 0. But the problem is, since it's being horizontally stretched, I know I'm not going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 2. Because remember, it's going down, not up. So I need to be able to identify, well, if I go over 1, how far do I need to go down? So to do that, we create a table of values. And the nice thing about absolute value equations is they have an axis of symmetry. They are symmetrical on the left side and the right side. So if I just graph one side, I can reflect it over to the other side to finish the graph. So let's just graph two points to the right. One, no, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, let's pick two points to the right. But I'm not going to pick one and two because I could. Um, but I don't really want to graph negative 1 third. All right? I'd rather be graphing integers. So I'm going to pick two points on the right, but I'm going to pick four, and I'm going to pick eight. Now you can pick one and two. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but by picking 4 and 8, the reason why I chose 4 and 8 because my denominator 4 is divisible into both of those numbers. So it's just going to make my graphing a little bit easier because I'll be graphing integers rather than graphing fractions. So when I plug 4 into this equation, I have absolute value of 4, which is 4. 4 times a negative 3 fourths, the 4's will divide out, and I'm left with negative 3. When I plug 8 in for x, absolute value of 8 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I'll do one of those, right? Absolute value of 8, change that 8 over 1. That reduces to 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. You do, oops. You do the same thing for 4. I just don't want to show all that work. Uh, maybe it's because I made too much video, many videos today. I'm not really too sure. So now let's go ahead and plot these points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So I go over 4, down 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then down negative 6. 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 8, down 6. So you can see that this graph is much wider, right? It's being stretched um, horizontally compared to uh, my parent graph. Now, all I need to do is reflect these. So I can go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 3. And I can go left 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, down 6. And you can see then I now symmetrical about that. So I can just reflect it over. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value uh, equation with a reflection and horizontal stretch. Thanks.